Hello guys, today we're going to start another new series. This is going to be about upgrading the Massey 8680 model. Now, this is the very first model that I bought and tried to convert. And it's had at least two different uh, upgrades since, uh, since the very first attempt. Well, originally I had a servo driving it, driving the rear wheels, and it was a little belt drive idea, and it worked pretty good, but um, you didn't have much power. If you tried to pull anything, you basically would just uh, end up with the belt spinning, so I upgraded to a CQ motor, and that made a, a big difference. We could then pull, but then I tried... Um, I tried a different design of only having one wheel driven so that we'd be able to take tighter corners so one wheel was free wheel and the other wheel had the little uh, hex uh, socket here that fits onto the axle and locks into the axle so only one wheel was driven that gave us a little bit better steering but if you went over a bump or anything and the drive wheel came off the ground it just spun so that was kind of useless too what I'm going to do in this upgrade is make sure that both wheels are driven I also I see I cut this hex piece off the other wheel and glued it into the massy uh, wheel rim so that I still had the nice massy wheel rim that matched the front wheels but I think I need to put that in a bit further in this wheel kind of sticks out a bit too far so I also need to do that to the wheel on the opposite side as well and that will give us drive to both of our rear wheels. This motor, I think, is reasonably positioned, but we have the problem of it being driven by this old. Um, this one is an L293, I think. No, actually, it's not. It's an SN75441. So that needs to be upgraded to the new dri motor drivers that were used in the the new John Deere models. So that will let us use 3.3 volts because this motor or this tractor has been has been using uh, 7.4 volt batteries and it's not great having half the tractors working on 3.7 and the rest working on 7.4 so I'm going to upgrade this so that it has the motor driver that will work at 3.7 volts as well that also means I can get rid of this voltage regulator here that's a 5 volt voltage regulator I think yep it's 5 volt voltage regulator so we're going to get rid of that and that will let us well actually we don't need that at all because our battery is low enough volts for the for the Arduino um, the steering server on this one was pretty good I have a Lego gear here so the Lego gear is connected to a servo which is in the bonnet here so there's our servo and that just happens to mesh well with the steering rack here so I'll leave the steering servo alone even though it is it's pretty big that's taking up a lot of space this was a Atmega 328 so it's kind of the old version of the Arduino Pro Mini so it's the this is this is called an SMD uh, arrangement this is a surface mount device whereas this is a true hole device so the surface mount device will actually fit up into the top of the bonnet here so it's basically taking up no space at all so I think I will replace this with one of these SMD um, Pro Minis Arduino Pro Minis this is this is that mega 328 is the microchip used in the Arduino Uno so that's all that is that yeah, needed to include the crystal, clock crystal and a couple of other little bits to, to make that run. But they're all included on this Arduino Pro Mini. So we get rid of that and upgrade it to this Arduino Pro Mini. That'll leave programming it a little bit easier. You can just connect directly here. Whereas this, you had to unplug it from this socket, plug it into the Arduino Uno, program it, plug it out, plug it back in here. It's a bit more awkward. The final thing we're going to upgrade 
the the roof here so in the John Deere 8360 RT model we put a much cheaper radio module it's one of these NRF 24 modules so I'm gonna stick that into the top of the cab same as I done in the John Deere but, uh, a second Arduino Pro Mini in the in the cab here and that will look after the radio communications it will just tell the Arduino in the bonnet how to control the servos and control the motor so that's not a big problem also this Arduino in here will control the LEDs on the roof of the tractor here so we have two beacons we have some uh, work lights at the front here some work lights at the back and I might add indicators and brake lights here and indicators here but I'm not uh, sure about that yet I might just I might just make the model uh, run and control what it has first and then we'll see how we get on after that maybe we'll add those features later on but that's the plan so today we're going to work on the cab of the tractor get the cab working perfectly one thing I forgot to mention is this tractor had no control over the lifting arms so I have a bunch of different sized little servos that will hopefully fit somewhere in here when we remove all of these uh, rather bulky electronics we should be able to fit some of these servers in here and with any luck we'll get the rear lifting arms working and if there's space we'll get the front lifting arms working but that might be a little bit tricky that one
Okay, well I have the wiring of this part done, so I've basically upgraded the the radio module and the microcontroller all in this top piece. But I'm not finished there. I want to add the LEDs. Maybe I'll add orange LEDs on these top two here, and on the lower two, I'll put clear white LEDs. Now I want to uh, do that with these 1.8 millimeter LEDs. But I don't have the ones that I want for this, so I've ordered those and in a follow-up video you'll uh, see me install them and finish off the cab completely. But this is basically everything that was on the original cab upgraded to the uh, current system that I'm using. So I have uh, I have connected up the beacons and uh, I left the blue lights that were on the back here because when I first built this tractor, it was my first one, I wasn't sure if I was going to be making any more so I just used the LEDs that I had and uh, I decided to leave those LEDs on it it was uh, more hassle than it's worth to change them so before I finish off the cab and close it all up I think I'll do a little bit of the code uh, for this this cab Arduino I guess you'd call it this is the first setup like this I have which has the beacons on it so I'll write a little bit of code for the beacons and I'll probably show you that in another video just that little piece of code I'm thinking of putting a few different uh, beacon flashing sequences that uh, can be selected from the controller. It's not difficult to change that kind of thing with an Arduino. You can have any sort of flashing arrangement you want, any frequency pretty much, but well, any frequency within the range of the of the clock on the uh, on the Arduino. So the last thing I'll do today is just uh, finish off the the little pieces of uh, plastic around the model. So. This piece, we've done that already, so it, it just slots in nicely. Just line it up properly. So that's pretty good. When that's held together with a couple of screws, that should look good. This next piece though, it, uh, it needs a little piece cut out. So we need to cut this piece out for the Arduino here and a little slot for the wires over there so that's the next thing i'll do well that's this piece modified it fits over it now just had to make space for the wires and uh, just the arduino pretty straightforward the next piece is this bit of glass here it sits in there and see it need to cut out a rectangle for the arduino before we just had the legs of the XB sticking down so it was a bit easier but this time we need to cut the whole uh, area of the Arduino out well here's our glass cut out now so we can just slide that on over our Arduino and you can see it's a fairly snug fit on it there so the only problem we have now is to get our wing mirrors to fit in Okay, well, that didn't seem too difficult. Looks like uh, well, our wing mirrors are a little bit loose. But it's not too bad. Our cab looks to be pretty much the same dimensions that it was before. It doesn't look too raised up. And maybe little bits here and there. But mostly it looks alright. I think that's worked fairly well. I'll just need to wait on the LEDs for this little piece and then that'll be the the cab for the Massey 8680 finished I think if you like that video make sure and give it a thumbs up and any comments and suggestions you can head on over to the forum or uh, leave a comment below the video here and um, that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching